hi guys welcome back to the channel today my name is osere me if you're here for the first time kindly subscribe and please turn on notification bell so you're notified when i post a new video in this video today we're going to be making this crisscross corset top um i stumbled on this picture on instagram and i knew i wanted to recreate it so if you're interested in seeing how i made this keep on watching and let's get started so guys already on the channel i have a tutorial video of how to draft a corset pattern actually i have so many of them so i decided not to share a detailed um, tutorial of how to draft it again in this one so we're going to be using the three-part corset pattern so i already drafted that in the video that i shared before so i'm going to be leaving a link to that three-part corset pattern in the description box for you guys to go and see so the only difference between that pattern and this one right now is that after the waistline as you can see i went down a little bit down to get like the full length of the top so this was not necessarily a crop top it went below my waist so that's just the difference between this one right now and the one i made before so these are all the patterns that i'm going to be using to cut out this corset so i'm just going to use this right now to cut out on my actual fabric so guys these are all the patterns i've traced them out so i'm using my green and yellow fabrics for my cups and then the kente fabric is for the body so i've already cut out everything and i went ahead to add a half inch all the way around for stitching allowance so now we're going to start joining our pieces together so first thing we're going to do is to join all the front pieces the three parts of the front pieces so we're just going to place them like this and i'm going to head over to the sewing machine and i'm going to stitch them down so guys this is what it looks like after i was done stitching it down and went ahead to press it um press my seams open so i am a little bit fast in this particular video because i already shared this same tutorial on the channel very detailed in my three-part corset um, video so that's why i'm a little bit fast on this one because i feel like it's just me repeating the same thing the only difference between this um, corset and the other one I made before is just the crisscross neckline so now as you can see I'm just arranging my cups in place just the same way I did in the other one just ensuring that they are placed in the right way so I'm just going to head over to the sewing machine pin the right parts to each other and I'm going to stitch them down so guys this was what my cup looks like after i was done stitching them down so like i always say to you guys if you stitch it down very well you realize that there's a space inside for your boobs to sit which is exactly what we have right now so guys the next thing i went ahead to do was to iron out a bias using the actual fabric so i am turning to the back of this particular corset this is what is different from the other one and i'm going to be placing this on the back so this is not going to be placed in front like i normally do so as you see me doing like this i just pin it to the dart area in front i'll pin it to the other dart area as well and i'll also place a third one in the middle so guys when you're done stitching down your boning casing the next thing you're going to do is to attach your cup to the actual fabric which is what you see me doing like this first thing i like to do is to just pin it down before taking it over to the sewing machine and stitch it down so this is what you have when you've stitched it down i also went ahead to iron this out now the next thing you want to do is to join your back pieces and your front pieces together on the side so when i was drafting this pattern i gave this a one and a half inch stitching allowance so as you see me doing like this i am marking that one and a half inch stitching allowance away and i'm going to head over to the sewing machine and stitch it down along the marks i just made So this is what I had after I was done stitching down the back and the front pieces together. So this is the front, I've stitched the sides to it. So everything I've done on this actual fabric, I'm going to just repeat it on my lining piece. And this is what I had after I was done doing everything on the lining piece. And in this waist area, as you can see, just so it has that curve and is able to come out really nicely, I made some notches there before I went ahead to iron it. 
so guys for the cup i went ahead to trace out the cup patterns on a wooden piece and like you see like this so i did not add any stitching allowance to the cup so there's a way i stitch it down using the zigzag stitch on my sewing machine so don't you don't have to bother yourself about this particularly if you do not have this type of sewing machine if you all have a ready-made cup you can totally use it here so guys when i'm done making my cup i just place it into the space i have here for cup just the same way you see me doing it like this and i just pin it in place just ensuring that it doesn't move from where i want it to be and i just go over to the sewing machine and i just make some tiny stitches all the way around and when i'm through with that i iron it in place because this is a wadding it actually sticks together so when i'm done ironing it out and stitching it together this is what i usually have you know there's a shiny part of the wadding that's the part i actually allow to go towards the fabric so that when i iron it out you see it comes together like this so it just comes together and they just become like one piece just like you're seeing it like this so whenever i iron out my cup i don't iron it flat i always use this ball here this is something i made from just pieces i just put pieces together to get the ball so i always just put my cup area on the ball and just iron it on top of it so that it comes out really smoothly this is just for people that don't know about something like this you don't iron your corset cup on a flat surface so guys if you check out my inspiration for this top you realize that the end of the top is not straight it's actually slanted so what i'm doing right now is i went up by two inches from the end of my um, top two inches on both sides and then i marked the middle as you see me doing like this so i'm just con going to connect those two inches curve to meet that point at the middle this will just give me a little curve just like the same that we are seeing on this picture right now which is what uh, we are following as an inspiration so as you can see we have this nice curve right here which is not too pointed but at least you can see the curve is right there so i'm just also going to make that curve just the same way i did right now on the lining piece so guys another thing i went ahead to do was to make bony casing on the ends of the fabric that's the back pieces just the same way i did in front so that we have a casing for boning um, at the back here and i left half of an inch on both sides for me to stitch my loop so now we're going to work on the part that everybody has been waiting for which is this crisscross neckline so i'm going to be taking it slow and steady from here so that you guys understand what i'm doing uh, i've been a little bit fast earlier because i've made this tutorial before and i didn't want to be um re repeating the same content again so guys to get the crisscross neckline we're going to take the measurements at the top of our cup and for this you just saw that i measured six inches so now we're going to use that to cut on my fabric so what i'm doing right now is i'm going to add half of an inch to that this fabric i have here is folded into two so i marked this at three and a half inch which is going to give me seven inches so by the time i'm done stitching this down it will end up being three inches so right now we have three and a half here then for the length we're going to make use of this whole fabric here i think it's about 20 inches long as long as the length you have is twice your chest line measurement it should be fine so my chest line is 8 inches twice of that is 16 so this is 20 it will definitely work perfectly so now i marked three and a half at the end and at the top i marked three inches here so i'm just connecting this point at the end here to meet the point i had at the top just to give it like a kind of curve you're going to see how it look after i am done cutting it out so i decided to curve it in a little bit more at the top because i just really felt like if it's too wide it's going to be choking at the neck area so right now i'm just going to cut this out so guys after cutting it out the first time i still felt some need um, to cut away like that half of an inch i added to it 
because I felt like it's going to be too wide and it's going to affect the neckline. So guys, after I was done with the cutting, I had 6 inches at the end and then at the top area, I had 4 inches. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut these out on my lining pieces as well. So this is the lining piece. I folded it together and cut it out. This is for the front and the back. So another thing I went ahead to do was to cut about half of an inch away from the whole lining piece so that it does not show in front when I join this with the actual fabric. Don't get confused. Just take a little bit away from it. Just the same way I did like this so that it's smaller than the actual fabric. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is to head over to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch it down here and then place bring the actual fabric and the lining together and stitch it down on the other side as well and I will do it for the two pieces. So after stitching it together and ironing it out, this is what I had. Now you see how the lining is in the middle and I have the actual fabric on the side so that it does not show on the other side at all. It's the same thing that happened here. So this is what I was trying to explain to you guys. So now this is our crisscross neckline ready. How exciting. So now I'm going to place the cups and these um, straps together. So just look at the way I'm arranging the straps and the cups. So I'm just placing the straps underneath the cup and I'm bending it. I'm slanting it. So I made a slant like this. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other side as well. But first, I'm just going to use my chalk to just mark, just ensuring that it's staying right in place, to just mark a curve along the part that the cup ends. Just see the curve that I created from placing the cup like this. And then I'll do the exact same thing for the other side. So we're going to make it cross to the other side, just like we did for the green like this and then we're going to just trace out our parts as well just trace it along the cup just ensure that it's staying right in place and trace it along the cup so this is what we have for the green right that's for the yellow and then this is for the green if you place it right on the cup like this so you can see it has that crossing effect which is what we are looking for so right now i'm just going to cut along these lines i was able to make from putting them right in place so this is what it's going to look like so it has the shape of our cups right so this is what i'm going to do now is to turn the right sides of my strap facing the cup and i'm going to pin it together like you see me doing like this Guys, this part can be a little bit tricky, so please don't go over to the sewing machine to just stitch it down like that without pinning it in place first. So when you're done pinning it down, this is what it's going to look like. So I'm going to head over to the sewing machine and stitch it down here and here. So after I was done with that, I went ahead to give it a very good press and this is what I have. This came out really nice and you can see the cross neck effect is coming out very nice. So I was a little bit confused on which one should be on top, the green or the yellow, but I finally settled for the green. I feel it looks better on top. So guys, now we're going to extend this strap to get over to the back because it has to get to the back. So what we're going to do now is to flip it over to the back and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark the point where I want my straps to be at the back. So guys, I went ahead to mark two and a half inches away from the sides to get the place where I'm going to place my strap at the back. And you know because the strap is going to cross, so when you flip it over to the back like this, you're going to ensure that your strap is going in the opposite direction so if it's um if it's on the left in front it should be on the right at the back i hope you understand because if it goes straight that means it's not going to cross so right now i'm just crossing this to the back and i'm pinning it down like i said i took two and a half inches away from the side 
so this is what I have for this side so I am crossing the other side now and I'm turning the back area as well just look at the way I'm doing it so that it comes out really neat for you so what I'm going to do is to place it right sides facing each other despite the fact that we are turning the back right sides facing each other like this and we're going to pin it down as well so guys after I was done with this first set of pinning I actually went ahead to try this on my body to be sure that the straps are perfectly in place that they are not too long or too short when I was sure they were perfect that was when I went ahead to continue with this process so when you've done this like this try it on your body then before you go over to the sewing machine to stitch it down so after I was done stitching it down this is what it looks like at the back so now I'm just going to open up my top like you see me doing like this and I'm going to ensure that all the straps are going inside the top because now we want to add our lining piece to this just like I always do I'm just going to place my lining piece on it like this but here we're going to ensure that all our straps are inside and I'm just going to pin it down all the way around So now I'm going to head over to the sewing machine and stitch it all the way around the top. So guys, after I was done with that, I just went ahead to make notches all the way around the top. As you see me doing like this, just to ensure that it opens up freely and the lining is not coming towards the top. Now I'm going to head over to the sewing machine and I'm going to top stitch on it towards the lining and I will do it all the way to the end. So guys, after I was done stitching down the top, this is what it looks like. I went ahead to iron it out as well and it came out really neat. So now for this back, I decided to remove this curve that also um, was also duplicated at the back when I made that curve in front. I just decided to make the back straight. So this is what I have. Next thing I went ahead to do was to pass my boning through all the boning casings that I created earlier. And guys, when you're doing this most times, actually all the time, it's actually going to be bent when you place it into the casing. It's totally fine. When you're through, just iron it out and it's going to come out straight. So after I was done placing all my boning through the casing that I had, what I'm just going to do right now, as you can see, I'm just turning the lining piece and the actual fabric to the wrong side again and i'm just going to head over to the sewing machine and i'm going to stitch it down here all the way to the end so after i was done stitching it down this is what i have this is how neat it looks you can see the front is looking very neat as well and honestly we're almost done with this so for this side here remember i left half an inch earlier so what i'm going to do is to go over to the iron and i'm going to fold that half an inch inside and I'm going to use my iron to press it down that space there is where I'm going to place my loop for my lacing so I went ahead to fold in these pieces here so this longer one is going to be for the lacing and then this short yellow one is going to be for the loop so for the loop I'm taking a measurement of 2 inches for each one of them so i'm going to take two inches for each one of them so that's what i'm going to use for the loop so you see the space i told you guys i was going to iron in this is what it looks like now i'm going to just fold my loop like this and i'm going to place it here and i'm going to pin it down and i would be giving it one inch gap to each of the loop so my next loop is going to be one inch away from this first one so i'm going to mark it here and i'll continue with this process all the way to the end so this is what it looked like after i was done placing my loops so as you can see i'm just lacing it up 
so that's basically all for this tutorial it was a really long one i guess this is like the longest tutorial i've ever done i hope you actually find it helpful uh, let me know what you think about it in the comment section if you're yet to subscribe please hit on the subscribe button turn on the notification bell give it a big thumbs up if you find it helpful please and um leave me a comment in the comment section let me know what you think about this in the comment section and i hope that you try it out and i would love to see your pictures you can send them to me on instagram i'll see you guys in my next one bye